Over the next few months, we are going to transform my 10 second ugly Silverado into one of the fastest and quickest extended cab, full size Chevy, four wheel drive drag trucks on the planet. Now, luckily for me, there aren't a whole lot of full size Chevy extended cab, four x four, big block turbo, sleeper, uh, color black, faded paint, dented rear quarter panel, Silverados that go drag racing in that category. So technically I'll be like, one of one, but I'm still gonna say I'm the fastest and our ultimate goal is to actually be somewhat competitive. I want a mid to possibly low eight second quarter mile machine, but we got a lot of work before we can make that happen and the chassis is what is gonna start today. Now, about a month ago, I went out and I purchased this guy right here. It's a completely, well, not new, it's obviously used, but it's a complete four wheel drive frame from like a, a one or a 2000 Silverado four wheel drive. So it has all the necessary components that we need to actually mount the front differential and the important parts that make it four wheel drive. Now the combination of a turbo big block and only rear wheel drive does make for some pretty epic burnouts. But when it comes to putting down power at the track, can be a bit of a challenge. Now I do know that there are some extremely fast two wheel drive vehicles. But I like the idea of building a four wheel drive because you get twice the traction and yes, you do have twice the resistance of all the moving parts. You have a lot more weight and a lot more complexity and it probably doesn't make sense to try to build a full size 5,000 pound silver out of to run eights. But that's what we're doing and I love the challenge of doing things that don't make sense. That's my whole mantra is building things that on the surface don't make sense. But there is a fair amount of, uh, what do you say, logic or craziness to my plan. Um, the whole truck is gonna be powered by, right back there. Uh, I haven't touched it in a long time, but that is a 535 cubic inch, 8.8 .8 liter, Gen 7 big block Chevy. This got, the bottom end is all put together. It's gonna be about 15 to 1700 horsepower or so when we are done with it. So I have a fair amount of power to work with, but the chassis, that's what we need to get going on today to make this whole plan come together. I've got about five months to make this entire conversion happen, which in those five months, we've got to build a roll cage, we've got to build a complete chassis, fabricate some front suspension parts, put the rear suspension on, um, get the frame painted, I already said roll cage, a bunch of wiring, convert over to the Holley Dominator EFI, we have to get the engine build done where we don't even have all the parts yet, and about a million other things. So we have our work cut out for us, but the first thing I wanna do, show you guys the parts. Now, even though the ugly truck is going to be a pretty heavy truck, I'm not gonna build it heavy just for the sake of building it heavy. I am gonna try to save weight wherever possible. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm rebuilding the front suspension, because in theory, we could put this thing together with all stock, you know, torsion bars and stuff like that, and it would work okay. But we are gonna save a lot of weight with this front suspension that we have here. Um, everything pretty much came from Wicked Fabrications. I'll put their Facebook page below. You can buy all this stuff directly from them. Um, right here though, this is what caught my eye factory GM aluminum spindles. I, I don't know what trucks these came on. I think like 13 and 14 certain trucks had aluminum spindles. And I, I, I don't really like using aftermarket spindles. I love factory stuff. So it was really cool that we could get these. They're aluminum. It's not a drop spindle, but our ride height will be dictated by what we do over here. And I'll talk about that later. But um, the Wicked Fabrication stuff is the spindles, the lower and upper fabricated control arm, and these things are pretty darn beefy, but they're still quite a bit lighter than stock. Uh, we have the new upper control arm. Same thing, much stronger, but also a lighter. Give the bushings and stuff and some ball joints. Um, they did send their basic entry level tie rod for the new spindles. I guess it works with your stock inner tie rod, but I also am, we have ordered through Wicked a, um, what's the uh, kryptonite, a good kryptonite tie rod set because Tie rods are like the weak link on these truck. If you ever seen like a, especially a Duramax do a launch and the front end kind of <laughs> kink in like that. <laughs> that's the tie rod. So we have a great set of tie rods on order. I think they were kind of back ordered like everything else is lately. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's the complete front end, upper and lowers for both sides, ball joints, 
tie rods, and voila, there you have it. Um, this is from a company called Zona, Zana Motorsports. They, I, I found this. These guys normally do like um, pre-runnery type stuff. And this is basically a upper control arm, um, call it like a locking alignment tab. Normally they have that like slot so you can, you know, slide that thing around and change the uh, caster and camber. But because of the amount of force going through here, I like the idea of like bolting this guy down. See, so it's got a little pin that sticks out there. I may actually put a proper bolt and nut in there, but um, Zona, Zana Motorsports, they gave, um, or they sold <laughs> these tabs, the bolts, that's their kit. So that is pretty much the front um, suspension, but now let's talk about springs and shocks. Also, my buddy from Warren, Maine sent me this stuff, Weasel Squeeze, which is kind of something I don't think I've actually seen before. Um, and I sees in like a little aerosol thing. So we'll give it a shot. Huh. Look at that. If you're wondering why I put NICs on these, it's a absolute must do on a threaded coilover. Basically, if you try to tighten these with any amount of spring pressure on them and there's no anti-season there, you'll seize up the uh, threaded collar on there. In case you're curious, the valving I chose uh, with Viking's recommendation was the AK valve. I don't know what it means, but that's what we have. Uh, 12 inch, 600 pound coils. Thing of beauty. So I did a coilover conversion on the Copo truck a little bit earlier this summer, and that turned out really good. In fact, um, you can use these Wicked Fab lower control arms with the atomic coilover kit, but um, I'm actually using a much longer shock, so I am gonna, I can't use the atomic kit because I'm gonna have to redo that. This is gonna be all custom up here. Still trying to pencil that out in my head, but um, my coilovers, of course, will attach to the Wicked Fabrications lower. Um, there's two schools of thought when it comes to front suspension in a four-wheel drive drag truck. Some people say you gotta strap the front end down. So basically, uh, there's a natural tendency for the front end of the truck to kind of want to rise up. And so some people say you want to fight that, strap it down with like a limit strap, and some people do that. Other people say, no, you want to let the front end rise up, but you don't want it to rise up too quickly. You want to be able to control that motion with a good shock. And that's exactly what I am going to try to do. So I stepped up, these, these aren't cheap, but these are Viking Crusaders and they're like 800 bucks for the pair with the springs and all that. But they have way more adjustment and a much, uh, what do you say, like a much tighter rebound than the Warrior shocks that I had on the uh, Cobo truck. The Viking Warriors are still a great shock, but when it comes to really kind of controlling the front end of a suspension in a high powered vehicle, you kind of need a little bit better valving. So that's what the Crusader is for. Um, these have a, I think I ordered a five and three quarter inch stroke on them. So they have a little bit more travel. Uh, but once again, that's why I have to build my own custom bracket. So we'll get into that in just a little bit. But first I did want to kind of weigh some stuff because, um, Weight savings is important. And I know a lot of this is gonna be much, much lighter than before. So I got a bunch of old parts downstairs. I'm gonna bring them up real quick, and put them on the scale. All right. There's our diff, but right now. We need that. And that. Oh, 
more of those. Those. some of those. All right, so this is kind of how all the suspension lays out when it's in the truck. This is the stock setup and it's kind of heavy. On one side here, we have a torsion bar. We have another torsion bar over there. That's actually what's the spring that like holds up the truck. We have a cross member back there that they go into. We have a torsion adjuster and a key one on each side and those are cast iron. Everything here is pretty heavy and you probably can't see it on the ground here in front of me, but I have a cast iron spindle and then I meant to keep them. I threw them away, but I also had a stock lower control arm and upper control arm, but I did go on to O'Reilly's website. They list the weights and the lowers are 28 pounds a piece and the uppers are uh, 8.6 pounds a piece. So uh, let's weigh the rest of this and see how much weight we actually are saving with our new front suspension. Okay, first, the cross member with the keys and adjuster bolts. And the bolts for the cross member. That is 23, 23 pounds. All right, two front torsion bars. These are pretty dang heavy. I'm gonna guess like 45. 40, 40 pounds. All right, finally, two front spindles. Thirty-four pounds. All right, spindles are thirty-four. Forty for the torsion bars. Twenty-three for the cross member bolts. Uh, Twenty-eight point four each for the control arms, lowers, and add eight point six each for the uppers. That's a hundred and seventy-one pounds for all the stock front suspension stuff that we are replacing, but. This is not a total weight loss because we have to replace, obviously, something in here. So let's weigh the new stuff. 21 pounds, nine pounds, 17 pounds, 10 pounds. All right, so the new stuff obviously doesn't have any cross member or keys, but here I'm gonna add like, say, six pounds just for like uh, ball joints, bushings, and a few other things that aren't in the control arm. So uh, I can already tell this is gonna be much less. That's uh, torsion, oh, that's the coilover is 10 a piece, so that's 20. Um, calculate. All right, so everything we're replacing it with weighs 73 pounds, and that's almost 100 pounds. So that's 98 pounds lost from the ugly truck. That's going to be awesome. Of course, the roll cage probably weighs a lot more than 98, but every little bit helps. So there you go. That's a pretty hefty chunk of weight that we're actually going to be saving off the front end. And any weight that you can remove that is unsprung weight, you know, stuff that's part of the suspension is going to have a pretty big improvement on the handling. So that 98 pounds over there, that is going to make a, well, ho hopefully a pretty noticeable difference. Although the, you know, 900 pound big block sitting on top of it <clears throat> may negate some of that. But anyway, can't wait to get started on the install. There is only one problem for me personally right now where uh, I'm kind of on light duty work. I just got my uh, sinus surgery done like a handful of days ago. I had a deviated septum and uh, so they went in there, they chopped some stuff out. I don't know what they do, but they gave it a port and polish up, up in my nose. So uh, hopefully long run, that'll make it so I can actually breathe. I did have a little bit of trouble breathing through my nose before, but anyway, that's uh, boring. No one cares about that. Um, next time I will be back in full swing. I'll get the front suspension started. There is going to be a fair amount of fab work involved in this process as well. Um, the main part of it is going to be reconstructing an upper shock tower, but because we're going to be in here, I'm also going to be moving the motor mount ahead for the big block. That'll be a little different from how I did on the last truck, but I'll show you all the details there. I'm going to be uh, plugging up that hole in the frame and reinforcing that. Um, we got to make some room in here for the coilover, do some more reinforcement and plating. So there's actually a fair amount of fab work that um, maybe for like the basic entry level street truck would not be required, but I like doing things the hard way. So that's the route that we're going to take. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if the coilover conversion for a street truck interests you, check out the uh, last video I did for the atomic fab coilover mount. Um, actually made a pretty big difference for the uh, handling and for the takeoff on that truck. So this truck should be even better. Thank you guys. Come back soon.